Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for inviting you and happy that to this very important and timely dialogue on uh, uh, you know, very important, and I think we have seen throughout the morning how essential uh, culture is uh, to peace, security, development, and to sustainable development. Uh, let allow me first to um, begin, perhaps, by um, giving you just a, a, a brief uh, picture of what's happening uh, in terms of uh, urbanization trends. Uh, since uh, about 2007, the world, the half of the world population lives in cities, and uh, um, uh, our research shows that this rate of urbanization is accelerating at an incredible rate. Um, uh, for example, we expect that approximately three billion new dwellers will arrive in our cities and towns by 2050. Now, when you look at the hist historic uh, it took many, many years, sometimes thousands of years, to build cities. Now we can build cities in a flash, you know, hundreds of cities in a very, very short time. So you can imagine uh, the implications. This accelerated rate of urbanization is, of course, happening in the regions of the world that are least urbanized, that is Africa, Southeast Asia, etc. That is not to say that they are the only one that will experience the challenges of urbanization. The developed world experiences other challenges, mm -hmm. such as aging, perhaps uh, cities become, uh, becoming maybe less uh, populated, the smaller, etc. So urbanization uh, and urban challenges are like, just like the post-2015 development uh, uh, agenda. They are, it's a universal agenda. Uh, which concerns all cities in the world. Um, also, it's, uh, urbanization has always uh, been seen, and I just spoke about the challenges that maybe the uh, cities in the developing world uh, will, uh, will have to, uh, to uh, uh, address. But urbanization is also uh, uh, has been a very positive, um, uh, uh, um, let's say, uh, aspect of development. In fact, through history, experience has shown that urbanization goes in hand in hand with increasing levels of income and improvement of social indicators, such as life expect expectancy, literacy, infant mortality, and access to infrastructure and social services. Now, uh, I will um, now focus on, uh, on culture, just uh, having given you the, the picture of, uh, on urbanization trend. Uh, I think the spe all the speakers be before me have spoken about the, uh, the pivotal point in the global policy agenda and uh, with uh, the, po the, uh, the imminent adoption of the post-2015 agenda and uh, uh, the Sustainable Development Goal. Just if you allow me to add that next year we will have also Habitat 3 conference which will take place in Quito. Uh, in October 2016, which will be actually the first implementing, in a way, global conference after the post-2015, and will focus on uh, uh, the implementation of a new urban agenda. Uh, also, um, I think uh, all the previous speakers have spoken about how important culture was to achieve sustainable development. Let me just to mention the 2013 also ministerial declaration of the high level segment of ECOSOC, which stated that culture is an essential component of sustainable development, and which represents a source of identity, innovation, and creativity for the individual and the community, and is an important factor in building social inclusion and eradicating poverty, providing for economic growth and ownership of development processes. His Excellency, the Ambassador of Peru, has uh, already given us all uh, where, where culture appears in the, in the targets of the Sustainable Development Goal. Just to highlight again that, the, that uh, heads, uh, uh, heads of states have also recognized that in order to achieve safe, inclusive, resilient, and sustainable cities, uh, the target, uh, uh, the target 11.4 is also required, which is about strengthening the protection and safeguard of world cultural and natural mm -hmm. heritage, uh, which my colleague from UNESCO has spoken about uh, in more detail. So 
culture. Culture consists of non-material aspects such as value, attitude, belief, and lifestyles of urban residents, but it's also the material aspects, and we have seen about physical infrastructure, public spaces, buildings, other architects of the urban environment. And cities now are the hot spot for culture. And in fact, cities are becoming more and more uh, multi-ethnic cities. And what, what uh, better example than New York City? And we know uh, the multicity and the richness of the, of the cultures that are demonstrated in the streets, in the parks, in, uh, in the stores, cafe, and everywhere in media and public spaces in New York City. So if there is a single measure of urban culture, it's this multi multiplicity of dialogues and interaction. Now, in very few words, and again, a lot has been said, and I, I'll try not to repeat, uh, but it's a convergence here of ideas, of uh, consensus that culture indeed matters and helps achieve economic, social, and environmental sustainable development, and they are key factor in the key factor for achieving sustainable urban development. For example, uh, the economic aspect. I think His Excellency, the Ambassador of Peru, had mentioned uh, about uh, what uh, Peru has contributed and how uh, culture has been marketed internationally. So it's about culture-led uh, development or redevelopment or revitalization of urban areas also and public spaces which helps preserve the social fabric, attracts investments, improve economic returns and increase competitiveness, stimulating a, di a diversity of intangible cultural practices and creative expansion, as well as promoting the cultural and creative industries. So it has it have helped to promote civic identity of cities, to market cities internationally, and the culture, as the ambassador of Peru has uh, so eloquently uh, uh, told us about earlier. Uh, now, cities also increasingly compete with one another to attract investment, good streets, market spaces, parks, uh, squares, gardens, and other public facilities, which become a vital business and marketing tool. So culture can act as a special feature to increase the values of public spaces driving economic development. We have world cities, uh, Rome, Athens, and others who are actually, uh, yeah, I know we have to watch. So I will, uh, the second one, and I won't go into detail, is the pervers a preservation of historical, a historic uh, building for attracting international tourists. I just mentioned Rome, Athens, <coughs> and other cities. Social aspect, of course, uh, we culture plays a strong role in fostering social cohesion and, uh, and in the going reformulation of cultural identity within multiple, uh, multiple cultural urban environment. So uh, the last aspect, and indeed environment aspect, and uh, we all know also, you know, when culture is enhanced and, uh, and, and is promoted, the, the definitely protection of the environment also uh, is uh, also uh, uh, happens as well. Uh, now, I know I have to go uh, fast. I just wanted to mention that World Habitat Day will be celebrated on the 5th of October in the Ecosox Chamber. Mm -hmm. I hope you'll join us. It's about public spaces. Culture also <laughs> happens in public spaces. So I hope you will join us. Uh, in, con in concluding, I just would like to say that indeed, as we said, cities of the world are more and more multi-ethnic and they need, of course, policies that make t need to be taken in place to take into consideration the cultural differences. We need to build harmonious, cohesive, inclusive, uh, productive cities and, and culture is at the core of it. And so we in Indian Habitat are mainstreaming culture into planning, design, governance, legislation, as well as urban financing. And again, I would like to end to say thank you very much for allowing us to be part of this dialogue, and I hope that we will continue uh, discussing this as we uh, move into the implementation of the Sustainable Development Agenda. Thank you.